Hey, what is going on, guys? It is Friday, and we're back. I'm back! <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. But you guys know Independence Day is coming up, and we have the USS Alabama with the Victory Camo, and of course, a very special guest, Mr. Legendary V19 himself. Legendary is a great friend of mine. He's been a viewer and subscriber of the channel for a while now. And he has a channel of his own that he is doing very well with. But uh, let's go over there and show him some love and support. Make sure you guys subscribe to him. I'll throw the link in the description below and throw a little screenshot, of course, on the screen here. But uh, I remember being a new content creator, so I'm just trying to spread the love like we've mentioned. Sometimes you just need that big break. I remember, like I said a few times, when the Hive Hound shouted me out. It just, it was such a good feeling. And Legendary, actually, he, he creates awesome content. As a lot of you know, he creates a lot of my thumbnails for the live streams. He is going to be a future graphic designer. He won't listen to me and put his talents on, on the internet. But uh, regardless, he is a great YouTuber, and we've got a game, uh, an epic replay from him in the Alabama here. But we have a game of domination here on Two Brothers. And no, unfortunately, Legendary is not going up the middle. He is, however, playing the side he spawned on, which is a message I try to say in every other video. But uh, Legendary plays this game almost perfectly. Uh, there was a few, maybe one or two moves that, that we'll point out, but anyway, you can see two ships spotted here, and the matchmaking is not really in his favor. Four destroyers, only one cruiser, and then four battleships. Now, the battleship thing is, is not, you know, we, we, we all like shooting broadside battleships, and here he gets a little bit trolled by RNG. One overpin on the nose of that. Now, that is sometimes why it is very important to angle or kind of cross angle there. You put the dispersion ellipse at, at a unique thing. And you guys have seen me do that many times in the Petro, in the Donskoy, and a lot of the cruisers, right? We angle out at that kind of diagonal angle. Number one, it improves, uh, you know, you can bounce potential shells if they do not overmatch your armor. And two, it kind of makes that dispersion ellipse, uh, you know, those shells kind of land sometimes horizontal or, or diagonal. You know, it, it puts you in the middle of that so you can't really get uh, shot at, or, or have the shells land like they do on this, this horizontal shot. Legendary is aiming a touch high. He gets that turret in incapacitation there. Uh, but he's aiming high because those juicy upper belt penetrations, especially on battleships, especially on German battleships, as you can see, this Bismarck has lost almost two-thirds of his health, are, are far more important than, than sometimes, you know, the shells landing a touch short. Now, we all know the dispersion ellipse is, is an, an oval created around battleships. But uh, when you aim, like, right where Legendary is aiming... Even if the shells land short, they will land at the waterline. If the shells land where they're supposed to, it's a belt penetration for, for four or 5,000 damage. You get three or four of those, that's 12,000 damage. The one or two flyer is an overpen. And then the, 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 the high flyers are overpens and the low flyers are potential citadel. So you guys often ask me and, and, and wonder why I aim a touch high sometimes, and that is the reason. Now, at, at 10 kilometers or so, if you know you can hit that citadel, I would aim waterline as you've seen me done a few times. But RNG will be RNG. There's a lot of rumors going around that, that always float around the community. And, and I used to be a believer of one of them is, or, or a few of them, it's bot protection, whatever you wanna call it. And no, unfortunately it's just RNG. Here, however, uh, you can see Legendary's team is doing the classic blue team maneuver and dying. We already have two German battleships down in a matter of moments. And, and I'm gonna be honest, I think Wargaming puts a little hate on, on the Germans, uh, you know, especially like the Bismarck. The Bismarck should be one of the best ships in the game, and it's just not. Yes, you can work your way into, a, you know, certain positions here, but I think they, uh, they could buff the Germans, or at least take away a little bit of that superstructure health. Here is a beautiful shot on this Miyoku. He kind of auto-aimed that shot. He saw he was going forward. Over half of his health, three penetrations, with one of which being a Citadel. And if you'll notice, right off the rip, Legendary is angled away, right? That angling that we talked about from the Miyoku, he's doing the same thing here. Why is that? Well, his destroyer is spotting for him, thank goodness. And that is preventing him from taking excessive damage. You'll notice that Kansas is sitting broadside, so there's there's really no reason for Legendary to, to be abusing his health, right? That Bismarck decided to push in, and yes, sometimes those pushes do work out. We all watch Spartan's videos. No, I'm just kidding. I love you, Spartan. Those aggressive pushes, sometimes they do work. But but more often than not, with, with how passive your team can be, sometimes uh, being aggressive like the Bismarck was, it just doesn't. And then you leave your team at a huge disadvantage. But if you will notice, Legendary's team is just collapsing around him. But he the game has just begun, so there's, there's not much he can do other than play his side. But if you will notice, 
his team is down to four ships already. So he went ahead and pushed it forward. That Miyoku is living on uh, living on a prayer there with probably about a thousand health. And we know that that Paulo is also low as well because Legendary took some shots at him. If I also, I've, I've seen that Paulo in a few games, A1. His, his name is on Xbox as Legendary gets his first kill. There he is. That dude had to have been either like the first player on Xbox or... <laughs> <laughs> or like nobody thought of getting that name, but his name is literally A1. So A1, if you're a, a viewer, I like your name, buddy. But A1 is in the Apollo here, and that is a very dangerous ship if played correctly. But it looks like he actually disconnected, or I don't know what. He knew that he was low health, but uh, Legendary takes the shot and gets the kill. So AP on uh, you know angled heavy destroyers like that, the Apollo, the Kaba, a few of the other Russian destroyers have you know a middle armor belt that that will sometimes now. Any calibers over 280 always overpin, but uh, sometimes, you know, with the medium caliber shells, they will arm those shells. So if you have like a 203 millimeter cruiser on a Kaba, they will hit that for a large chunk of damage. But enough blabbering about some useless facts that most people will not remember anyway. Legendary sees a broadside Kansas. Not sure what this Kansas was doing, but he's going to take that shot, aim it a touch high, and just like we talked about, he got five pens, one overpin, and one shatter there for a nice chunk of damage. So aiming mid-belt, guys, is, is just the way that I do it a lot of the times. Now, again, certain ships have different armor profiles. And for example, the South Dakota classes, such as the Alabama and Massachusetts, actually have a citadel that is slightly below water. So if you aim waterline, you, you, they have to be at a kind of a range there in order for you to get a citadel. Now, again, he aims a touch high, and that was just a, an example of a bad roll of RNG. We all hate it, especially like we talked about, especially battleship players. When you have to sit there and think about your shot every 30 seconds as you do, you know, in a battleship, you, you, you often find, you know, different conspiracy theories to make up about RNG, but unfortunately it's just, it's just RNG. We got, you know, we, we love it when it goes with us. We hate it when it goes against us, but here's another one of the shots. Now, if I'm being honest, I probably would have aimed a touch lower, but it works out in his favor. As we talked about aiming middle belt, six pins, two over pins and a good night. Thanks for playing for legendary's third kill of the game. But if you look up at the scoreboard, despite Legendary absolutely dominating his side, you know, he had a half decent destroyer teammate, <laughs> his team is gone. That division was wiped in seconds on the opposite flank. They failed divisions. Now, it didn't really work out to be a failed division because it was in a tier six lobby, but choosing a, a tier seven ship with a tier six or any off tier you know, division like that can lead to a failed division and is never advised. But divisions are clearly OP as they died in record time. Now, sometimes, you know, we all, you know, a plan doesn't always go according accordingly. But uh, if you're not living past the seven minute mark or the halfway point in the game, often you really need to reconsider how you're playing the game. You know, now we some people play for fun, which is fine. But you're, you're kind of sometimes ruining other people's experience if you're not you know, at least putting in some effort. That's, that's, you know, my stance anyway, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll let Legendary finish the game out here. He's pushing into Bravo. He could have turned around, but you can see there's three destroyers left. So him going against a destroyer in an Alabama, while the Alabama does have a decent torpedo protection, it's kind of slow. It doesn't, you know, it, ha it has decent turning, but it's, it's just slow and, and going against a, a destroyer that you can't see is, is not really, uh, ideal. So he's sticking with his one destroyer, and they're getting B here, and that is when the Zetan or Zaitan pops up. So he's gonna, you know, line up the shot here and try and get his fourth kill of the match. Something we were just talking about, you know, surviving halfway into the battle, uh, and something that is not really mentioned often when we brag about stats is survival rate, right? Now, some people run and hide to the back of the map, and that's not what I'm talking about. But if you're not surviving 40 to 50 percent of your battles, you again you probably need to readjust your strategy now it's different for each ship you know some some cruisers are a lot more squishy etc but but you really need to be surviving about 50 percent of your battles and that's that's often a stat that most people don't look at uh and, and we all know bravo foxtrot has is one of the best destroyer players in this game and he has nearly an 80 percent survival rating um, coupled, you know, with his excellent win rate, and it's a great example of how staying alive, especially in a destroyer, can greatly influence the game. Here, right after Legendary gets that kill on the Zetan, though, I think is Legendary's first mistake. 
he should not have healed uh, right away, and he should not have popped his damage con. One fire, while it is annoying, and yes, he is not detected now, uh, he can heal all of that damage back up. And now he is detected, and it's probably a destroyer, right? There's three destroyers left. He is not spotted. You know, there's not another battleship spotted. So if he takes a torpedo right now, that is going to be massively detrimental. Now, thank goodness that the, the other uh, Blitzvakia there was spotting the Shiratsu. Uh, but just a just a note, right? Don't don't heal one uh, fire. It's just kind of a, you know, a PSA for all battleship players. Here, legendary gets absolutely trolled with RNG, uh, and unfortunately, he has to turn away. I think he turned away for. There's a few good reasons as he takes his citadel. Ironically, from the Ganaisa now, the Ganaisa now being one of, <laughs> I feel like the most inaccurate ships. And and just like we mentioned, that is the exact reason he had to turn away. Torps from the Shiratsu, which would have flooded him. Now, if he had saved his damage con, he could have potentially turned in and, and rushed that Shiratsu, which is often a play a lot of battleship players don't really think about making. Uh, that Shiratsu is torps down. Now we know that the some you know that that line of the Japanese can have a torpedo reload booster. I, I actually don't remember if the Shiratsu does. You guys should let me know if you know in the comments down below. As Legendary gets another broadside uh, on a German battleship, we talked about those juicy penetrations, and he ticks the high caliber. So he's done a third of the team's damage, right? That is the high caliber metal, uh, and four kills, right? So the damage is not you know nothing large, but you have to remember the damage is scaled to the the sh the total ship's HP pool, right? Uh, in, in a battleship heavy lobby, there's going to be more damage, uh, but there were four destroyers in this game, so there's only a certain amount of damage he can get, and he has already gotten a third of it. Coupled with the fact that he has four kills. And another salvo, right? Four over pens, so those shells went a touch high, but three pens and just, what, what a 20k salvo there on those battleships. Unfortunately, though, there is only two battleships left on his team, and there is no way, really, for him to, to spot those destroyers. So like we were talking about, sometimes pushing a destroyer smokescreen is the play, right? If the... Often destroyer players think that they're invincible because of their concealment. Um, you know, it's a factor of the game as Legendary gets his fifth kill for the Kraken Unleashed there on the broadside Ganaisa now. But as we were talking about, as his vanguard uh, <laughs> makes an expert turn into, into Fletcher Torps, uh, and he is now the last remaining ship alive, uh, you know, rushing that destroyer smoke is sometimes a much better play. And a lot of destroyers recently with the Schlieffen and the German battlecruisers have been caught with their pants down with that six kilometer hydro. It's just kind of a rule of thumb that all Germans, you know, German cruisers and battleships at tier seven and above have a six kilometer hydro. Now it is different for each ship, but if you're a destroyer player, just use that rule of thumb, right? If it's 5.7, well, you're out of there, you know, 0.3 kilometers early. And that is when the Fletcher, if you're a destroyer, right, and you have you know, torpedoes that outrange your concealment, you should never be spotted. I have no idea what this Fletcher is doing. Now, there's two other destroyers alive, but if I was this teammate, I'd be like, what are you doing? He just launched his torps. We know that the American destroyers, especially the Fletcher, have like a, a minute and a half reload at the very earliest. So there is, I have no, absolutely no idea what that destroyer was doing. And that is the reason I started my YouTube channel. It's just very, the plays like that where you're like, what are you thinking, right? This game is not that difficult. If you have concealment, use it to your advantage. But Legendary took advantage of that misplay, and now it is a 2v1. Unfortunately, he just took a Torp, so he's on his, his damage con there, and he only has 20,000 health and no heals. And that is when he notices the second rack of Torps. So he knows there's a destroyer, obviously the Shiratsu in the cap, and there, the other destroyer is out on that side there. So there's not really much Legendary can do at this point. The only thing he can do is push right at these destroyers and hope they make a mistake. Now, he does know that that Shiratsu is in the B-cap, and he, besides looking at the destroyer, knowing what it is, which is, it's actually a ZF-6, which has an 8.5 or 8-kilometer torpedo range, that would be the only way to know, you know, how far away that ship is. So he is making the only logical play he can, really, which is pushing into the B-cap because he knows that's where the Shiratsu is, trying to get that kill. Now, sometimes destroyers, out of pure lack of intelligence data, will start open water gunboating. Now, if you're a Kaba or another gunboat with a lot of health, yeah, you can do it, but uh, you will see here very shortly that is not the case for the remaining two destroyers. 
Uh, unfortunately, though, I think the Stratsu got its reload booster off. I'm not sure. So somebody let me know. I'm pretty sure it has a reload booster, uh, but if not, then then don't quote me on that. Uh, but regardless, the Stratsu got some torps off and caused a flooding because Legendary had to repair the other set of torps. And that is when the Shiratsu gets spotted. One more overpin would have killed that Shiratsu on that earlier shot, but unfortunately it just didn't work out. And that is when the ZF6 starts shooting. Now we know that Legendary is low health and he's flooding here, but he actually pops the heal. He has 3000 health. If he had 20 more seconds in the game, I believe he would have gotten uh, that kill. Unfortunately, it's a loss, but that was a seven kill Confederate or I'm sorry, high caliber Dreadnought Kraken game uh, for just a great replay. Only 1,872 base. I feel like he should have gotten more, but if you just kind of look at his team, they just let him down pretty massively. But uh, th that's just a lesson in, you know, trying until the end. You never know what you're going to get. Now, I think a lot of people probably overestimate their skills against random players who have no idea what they're doing, right? You'll, you Sometimes you just see plays, and you, you see this sometimes on Chili stream. We, we joke often with, with our group of guys that Chili gets all the paid actors. And you could have said the same thing about my two or three most recent, you know, record games. But uh, some people probably overestimate their skills. So, you know, just pay attention to your positioning, and you're only going to get better by learning from your mistakes. But that was a fun, epic replay from Mr. Legendary. Like I said, go over and give his channel some love. I appreciate you guys. Like I said, my channel is doing better than I ever thought it would. We're almost at 8K, and I'm sure it'll be soon to 10K. So I really appreciate you guys. Uh, it should be Friday, so we will be on tonight for some member count-ins. Make sure you guys stop in to you know, enjoy those. But comment what you thought on the video. Let me know if that Shiratsu has the reload booster or not, if you know I'm a bot with Tier 6 Japanese gunboats. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Love you guys. Have a great day. I'm out. Peace.